to start with Cliff Kellerman. Cliff, w what do you think of this? Well, first of all, however much it is, Tom Brady's earned every penny. I mean, I, was, I didn't think it was out of the question that they could win a Super Bowl because the team was so stacked. But I thought he would be along for the ride, a game manager, and he's clearly more than that. He threw 40 touchdowns last year. He was still excellent, and he proved his point that it was the lack of weapons in New England. He's still got it, and he's worth every penny, whatever that is. Now, I don't think it's coincidence that I don't think it's coincidental that the GOAT, Tom Brady, has always allowed the team to kick the can down the road to get cap relief so that they could afford to put a team around him. It's very smart of him. Now, I'm not saying every player should follow that example. Almost no one will ever play, maybe never, as late as he did at this level, right? Who, who's going to play 20-plus years in the NFL? Not many are going to be married to a super-rich spouse. You know, I get that he has circumstances, and also uh, he's had longevity that where he's benefited from all this. That's not going to be everyone. But when the, when the owners brought in the salary cap, they really did pose this question to players, essentially. How much do you want and how much do you want to win? Because those two things sometimes are at odds. And Tom Brady has always been the best at providing the team with relief at his own short-term financial expense, though obviously it's worked out for him in the long run. He's determined to play through the age of 45. I don't think that he'll play the next four years, but I think this guarantees that he's going to complete his mission of playing up until the age of 45. He turns 44 on August 3rd, so that means he'll play next season at the age of 44. The following season, uh, he'll turn 45. He'll complete those two years. In the meantime, he gave the Tampa Bay Buccaneers cat relief, which enables them to keep, for the most part, the players that they had in play. I don't think it's an accident why they franchised Godwin as opposed to Shaq Barrett. Why? Because Godwin is the one that Tom Brady is throwing the football to. Y'all figure out what the hell y'all going to do on defense, but you make sure that our offensive weapons that I have available to me remains elite and intact. And that's exactly what he's doing here. And so when you look at it from that perspective and what he's enabled the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to do, that's what it is about the four-year extension. It's not to say that they're going to throw him away to the, to the trash uh, in, in, in year three or four because that's all going to be contingent on how he's playing. But what they've done is they've made a commitment to him because he's worthy of that commitment that we want you here as long as you want to be here. So he has the level of security that, quite frankly, he didn't get in the latter years in New England. He ain't wondering or guessing or anything like that. He's in Tampa, Florida. It's the Sunshine State. The weather in South Florida is beautiful. On top of all of that, it's a tax. There's no state income taxes there. His money goes a long way. He's got Derek Jeter's mansion, unless he's moved someplace else that I don't know about. There's a separate room for Antonio Brown. Might as well Brown. buy it at this there's, point. No, I rent it there's anymore. There's a separate room for Antonio Brown if he wants that, too, because Antonio Brown is going to be even better next year than he was this year, assuming that he still stays there. You still got Godwin. You got Evans. You got O.J. Howard coming back. Oof. You still got Brady. They're going to get better. Cal He's probably coming back as well. You look at the pieces that they have in place. He's basically saying, my boys, we all won this Super Bowl together and we handled our business. I'm going to do what I can to keep us in play while at the same time securing that if I want to be here, there's absolutely no problem with me being here. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers made that commitment. He deserves it. I'm happy for him. There's no question that we can all look at Tom Brady and realize that, especially towards the end of his time in New England, he took less than a fair market deal because there was a desire, or at least a thought, that the team would then put good players around him to compete for a championship every single year. Well, in New England, that trust seemed like it was broken, and I think that this extension signals that he trusts Tampa Bay to do exactly what he thought New England would do when he took under a fair market deal. Think about this. He signs a two-year $50 million contract with Tampa last year. That's actually a worse deal than the deal Phillip Rivers signed with the Colts a year ago. Phillip Rivers was a one-year $25 million deal, and then he was going to be free again. Like, the, think of it, like, for a second, he signed a worse deal than Phillip Rivers a year ago, and now he's signing a deal that I think we probably would all agree does, you know, gives them a ton of relief, and it gives them the opportunity, whether it's Shaq Barrett, whether it's Gronk, whether it's Antonio Brown, whether it's somebody at the running back position. Like, like what it's done is it's essentially given Brady the assurance that, hey, we're going to give you another shot at this to go win another one. But let me, let me answer that, and then, Stephen, I want to answer something that you said. I think that Belichick 
the reason Brady left in retrospect is not that Belichick, well, I mean, they all spend the same amount of money, more or less, it's that he was spending it on the defense. Resources were going to the defense, and that seemed to reflect a belief that maybe Brady was declining and unable to carry a team and had to rely on the running game and the defense more. And I think that's probably what irked Brady because you see the Bucks investing in the offense. But I want to say something about the offense, Stephen A. In fact, when you look at... Um, at the receivers. Godwin is actually the expendable one. He's young, he's already very good, but AB, if he's firing on all cylinders, is, you know, in the best of all time conversation. And, and Evans is probably the next best receiver on the team when you're not talking about the tight ends who can also catch passes, right? And then Scotty Miller's really the burner. He's really the speed guy. So Godwin is the one that they haven't committed to. They franchise him, but they haven't committed to. And Shaq Barrett, they're, they're having contract negotiations with. They are having contract negotiations with him, but I would remind you, even though we lamented the fact that Chris Godwin dropped a couple of passes, you know, in the latter part of the season, or particularly in the playoffs, for the most part, he wasn't really dropping passes. He was a, he was a reliable weapon for them. You moved him to the slot to some degree. He was at, at 24 years of age. Consider the kind of things that he has that kind of potential of. I'm sorry, I, I don't, I don't, I don't view Chris Godwin as the most expendable one at all, considering his youth and his skill set and what he brings to the table, and the fact that Brady spoke so glowingly about yeah. him. This is a target that when you talk about Brady being here for the next two, three, possibly four years. What about the team, the though? You want they to, franchised you want him for a reason. I want to say, I think they think, it seems to me they think maybe this guy can be great. He's not there yet. Let, let me see it 24. first before we give him the contract. 24. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.